Welcome, neighbors, to Hometown Earth, the podcast that brings a down-to-earth approach to all of your sustainability questions. I'm your host, Lena Sanford, here on the Believe Podcast Network, the number one podcast network for professionals. Here, we believe that everyone can change the world. Do you believe? I'm a Midwest gal with big dreams to discover what it takes to reduce my impact on this beautiful place we call Hometown Earth. Join me every Tuesday as we navigate what actions we can take, big or small, to make a positive impact in your life and the lives of your neighbors on Hometown Earth. This week, we're going to talk about composting. You may already do it yourself, or maybe you know someone who does. But Casey Can is making a name for compost in a big way that you won't forget. And I'm thrilled for you to hear about them. Casey Can Compost is an environmental and social justice organization in Kansas City, Missouri, that is committed to the transformation of lives and the environment. They are providing all of the necessary resources to make composting convenient and affordable for businesses and individuals through their environmental education and tailor-made compost bin services that work with any schedule. But it gets better. They are also educating and employing once homeless men and women at a living wage to collect the organic waste from local area kitchens and divert it away from the landfill for composting. As they say, two goods, one solution. So let's break it down. Essentially, composting is the decomposition of organic materials, aka food scraps and waste, to create nutrient-rich material like an organic fertilizer, so that it can be safely applied to the environment in comparison to throwing our food waste in a landfill where it produces large amounts of methane gas. Well, why does diverting food scraps away from a landfill even matter? Kristen Chamberlain, the executive director of KC Can Compost, says that when the methane from our food waste is released into the atmosphere, it is 86 times more potent than CO2 as a driver of climate change over a 20-year period. And unfortunately, it is estimated that about 72 billion pounds of food waste are sent to landfills each year, not including the waste from your home kitchens. Kristen told me that about 51% of materials that we send to a landfill right now are compostable, So it really doesn't make sense that we could be doing something with our food scraps to create a valuable resource that would combat climate change. But instead, we're adding to the problem with it. Not only helping to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in landfills, compost helps to replenish and restabilize our nutrient-drained soils, increasing plant growth, which in turn leads to more carbon being pulled from the atmosphere. That is extremely important for our food production and for fighting climate change. Composting can also help the soil retain water more efficiently, minimizing runoff that contaminates our waterways and contributes to land erosion. Oh, and those landfills? They don't keep themselves up. It is costing us time, money, and energy to keep them running for no end gain. There are so many benefits to composting, it just makes sense. That's why Kristen went to work to figure out the best way to do that and serve the Kansas City community. In this episode, we talk about how Kristen Chamberlain worked with Shelter KC to bring KC Can to life and how their program is working collaboratively across the city to transform lives and the environment. We also talk about why composting is important, how compost bins work in practice with local restaurants and urban dwellers, why this process is unique, and how taking care of the planet is social justice and environmental justice. So let's get down to breaking it down with Kristen right now. Kristen, thank you so much for joining us and chatting with us a little bit about KC Can Compost. Um, If you don't mind, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your role uh, with the company. Sure, sure. So I I am the executive director of KC Can, and I guess in brief, I, I really see myself as more of the dreamer at the top. <laughs> um, I have uh, an amazing team uh, that I work with, and I, I facilitate everything we do through them. So it's um, I'm really more of a facilitator than anything else, I think. 
Well, everybody needs a good dreamer. So I'm glad that you had this one and um, were able to bring it to fruition. Well, so this is kind of the brainchild of you and Joe Colazzi. Uh, How did that conversation spark? Um, I wish I was a fly on the wall. And did you ever dream that something like this would ever come to fruition? You know, um, it's funny. It it started when I was working um, on another social enterprise uh, locally. And um, Joe came to to visit what what I was working on. And um, he sort of had a similar vision for Kansas City Rescue Mission at the time, which has now been rebranded as Shelter KC. But at that time, um, that's when I first met him. And you know, I had spent a, a lot of time putting together the other program, but um, realized there were several flaws in the concept that I was working on. And so when Joe approached me, I said, I'd love to work with you and then the Kansas City Rescue Mission on on something like this, but I'd like some time to to really research what we're doing and how we're doing it to make sure we're maximizing the benefits for both the homeless and and Joe was from the very beginning committed to uh, wanting whatever the rescue mission did to have an impact for the city. He wanted it to give back. Uh, so he he had that double, um, you know, the double goal from the very get go. So anyway, so that's how our conversation started, and uh, we had a great working relationship. And I I spent about a year really a year, almost a year and a half while walking through the process of researching, uh, I began researching homelessness and um, what the the barriers to employment were for that population, uh, things like, you know, criminal records and things like that that are very, very hard for people to overcome. And it didn't, it didn't jive with the industries that were growing, uh, like tech and the medical industry. Um, so if you've got a criminal record, you can't work in the medical industry for the most part. Um, there were, you know, educational deficits that you're dealing with. So the tech industry really eliminated some of those opportunities for people. So we really walked through it slowly trying to make sure that whatever we created maximized, you know, the benefits for the the people transitioning out of homelessness. And um, ultimately we landed on, on the composting idea because it really met both priorities. We, we wanted to create something for the city and it just checked off all the boxes. It checked off all the boxes. Yeah. Yeah. It was really uh, a, a great match. Even from the beginning really believed both of us, Joe and myself that, that it was possible and that it was happening in other cities and countries and and that we could you know pull it off here. So that was back in 2016 and I know that um, I, I had read up and saw that you had looked at a bunch of other models some from France and Germany I'm sure there were plenty of other things that you looked at during your time of research. How did you know that you know those models were going to work for Kansas City and kind of what makes what you're doing a little bit unique? It's funny with the research, we really picked um, pieces out of what was working in some places and also researching what wasn't working in some places. So cities across the country, um, across our country, have have tried different models. And, you know, you go to a place like Vermont and sort of look at, at what was happening there. And I ended up calling a lot of these places and saying, would you just 15 minute conversation with me. This is our vision. This is what we're trying to do. And they were so gracious. And they would often say, don't do X, Y, and Z. Like this has been our biggest mistake or uh, you could avoid a lot of heartache if, if you don't go down this road. So um, so really it, it was a combination of um, looking at what worked and what wasn't working. For these cities. And then, you know, Kansas City is a unique space. So we had done research on what's going on here and where we thought the city was in terms of their environmental um, movement. And we took that into consideration as we were building our, our business model and realized education and 
city involvement um, was going to be critical to to our success. So I feel like that it is really unique. And I'm, you know, I'm from Missouri, the boot hill of Missouri, but um, just knowing that there's um, something like this in the state and I'm actually in Columbia right now, but it's really just hopeful. And I feel like that it's some a, a good model that a lot of people should take note of because it is kind of joining together that environmental and social justice initiatives, which you talk about. And it's kind of, you know, most people look at those separately, but they really go hand in hand. And I feel like you kind of solved, solved both of those, well, not solved, but are, are putting a, a really good effort towards both of those um, through Casey can. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That, that environmental piece, um, the environmental justice piece, I think, is confusing to a lot of people. The, ter- the term is is difficult, I think. But but ultimately, you know, we're not only working with the homeless, but but composting itself, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, providing our city with a a method, a real system for management. It impacts all people and communities. So, in terms of environmental justice, what we're going to see. Uh, and what we already are seeing is that the similar communities that are being disproportionately impacted by the COVID crisis right now are the same communities that will be impacted and are being impacted by climate issues. And it's not fair. It's not equitable. And so Casey Cam's really committed to to trying to educate and, and bring our, our city together to realize that what we do at home and composting actually does impact people, not just in our own city, but across the globe. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people, you know, don't realize like the effects that landfills have. Um, and they're usually disproportionately affecting people based on where where those are located. Um, and, it, it, you know, it's causing lung and heart disease for some people, which is a real, real problem. Right, right. Um, no, and people here, there's something called the vulnerability index. And we've gone to this um, often to show what's happening in Missouri. You know, what are the communities that will be impacted? And you've got things like asthma off the, I think it's called the 70 corridor. I'm not from Kansas City, but um, I think that's what they called it with a disproportionately high um, rate of, of asthma and respiratory related issues. And it's, yeah, it does impact people. Obviously, like you said, the, the landfills and in production contributes to our climate issues. And as a result is going to disproportionately impact poor communities, communities of color, elderly, children. Well, so I know you um, mentioned the work that it kind of came together with Shelter KC. I'd say KC can is kind of a outgrowth to um, that initiative there. But essentially, like, if you would just want to kind of break down what that that relationship looks like, how much do you have contact with them? And, and kind of how do you help those individuals, um, not just by employing them for, for a good purpose, but also to help them to grow? Yeah, good, good question. Uh, two pieces there a, a little bit. I'll break it down. One, just in terms of our relationship with, with Shelter KC now, essentially we are two separate 501s. Uh, so we're both nonprofits. What the, the idea is, and unfortunately it's been, it's been impacted pretty significantly by COVID because many of the homeless live in community. Uh, we can't have them at the warehouse or on the trucks at this point in time. But um, but the idea there is that we, and this really was from the very beginning, the people transitioning out of whether it's homelessness or addiction issues uh, have experienced in lot, lots of trauma uh, in their lives. And so our, our vision for KC Can is to provide those individuals an opportunity to really gradually increase their capacity for work. So if you've been on the street for, you know, the last five, seven years, whatever it is, uh, going back into 40 hours a week right away, it's not a very realistic 
you know, option for a lot of people. Right. So, so Casey Can's vision is to work with counselors and therapists to figure out what's appropriate for each individual. And for someone who struggles with maybe something like schizophrenia, for instance, um, work and is important. You know, there's value in that. But maybe 40 hours a week is not a, a possible situation. So our concept really is to provide them. Maybe we start off at two hours a week and we make it a couple months at that. And then we gradually build um, their capacity to, to work more and more based on what the counselors are, are directing us to do. So we try and work hand in hand with the mission to, to bring people in that are in the right space and have completed their recovery portions of their program uh, and are ready to start that next phase. The other thing we have done at KC Can is uh, last year, and it's kind of filtered into this year now because of COVID, we received the uh, EPA's Environmental Justice Grant, and we put together a really amazing program uh, with what's called Conover, which is a soft skills program for people transitioning back to work. And we've combined that with another curriculum called Roots to Success, which is based out of Berkeley, California. Some professors there have, have put this program together. It's it's an environmental literacy and environmental job training program. So the idea there is that we're opening this up to the broader community as a whole, that these green jobs are increasing. They pay living wages. And so we're really, really excited. Um, we're relaunching this again in February and um, you know, hope that as we get to the other side of COVID, that this provides people with a real solid opportunity to move forward in green industry jobs, whether it's solar, water management, or solid waste management. Yeah, that's amazing that y'all are doing all of that. That's just, I feel like it's so needed. And I love the individualized um, assessments and, you know, kind of, it's not just a one size fits all. It's, you know, trying to make sure that you're helping people where they're at. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, at least for us, that's kind of where we're at is, uh, it, it, you can't create one boot that, that fits everyone. <laughs> the needs are so great. And, um, people have different skill sets and, and different things they're bringing to the table. And so uh, it's best to work with the strengths. Well, I know that you're also kind of working in conjunction right now with the Chef Collective KC to kind of help feed people who are in need. And having, um, it's, it's a, not a good case to have to have a uh, waste from, from their, um, programs, but it's nice that y'all are able to kind of close that loop and, um, help collect that food waste and turn it into something, even through something like a pandemic. Absolutely. And, and this is something that, again, part of our big vision is, is, you know, as a composter, we're kind of the bottom feeders, really, uh, according to the EPA's hierarchy of, of what we <laughs> should be doing. So, so we love being part of, of the bigger loop. And uh, Canby's market is um, in particular. So we we're share a collaborative space with them. And it's been really great just being part of that growing organization. Um they're essentially getting food that otherwise would have been wasted into food deserts. And then what can't be used by them gets sent to the chefs, um, you know, to be used in, in immediate food preparation. And then, of course, we take whatever all of those groups can't use as a whole. So it really is a it's a really cool um, collaborative that that we see has a lot of potential for growth to start putting a dent in the inefficiencies of our food systems out there. Yeah. And I will just say, I feel like um, the bottom feeders, they work smarter, not harder. So you're kind <laughs> of um, putting that brain to work. And I, I really like that. And the collective nature of it, um, you know, whenever there's more minds, it usually comes up with a really good result. So I, I love that. How much do y'all divert from the landfills probably on a monthly basis? I mean, where we are right now is we've diverted over 
400,000 pounds since beginning this process. Wow. We're up somewhere now We're because we're growing, you know, pretty rapidly, even, even in the midst of the pandemic, we're growing pretty rapidly, but I think we're somewhere around 60,000 for like December uh, in a wow. month. And we're just seeing that increase. So we've brought on a whole new group of, of restaurants um, the roastery or coffee collective has come on. So, um, messenger coffee, roastery coffee, um, black dog, the filling stations are all, have all joined. And so that's gonna, you know, coffee grounds are heavy. (laughs) So they they figured out from just their organization alone, they should be up over 30,000 pounds, you know, in this next year. Wow. Well, so, um, I kind of was perusing the website and I can see that there's so many local restaurants like you just mentioned and rotisseries and even the Nelson Atkins, um, which is really amazing. I I love that y'all have kind of built that. And then you also do kind of personalized urban uh, compost bins too. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I will give a shout out to the Nelson uh, who's been on with us from the get go. They were committed Immediately, their executive chef, uh, Marcus Locke, and, you know, they do a lot of uh, events, you know, major events and weddings. So there's a lot of waste. So it wasn't even second thought with them. Um, they've, they've diverted a tremendous, tremendous amount. And the Kemper has been on, too. So the arts community is, is right there with us, which has been great. So what we're doing with the urban composting is we're trying to make it really easy. That's our main thing. How do we make it clean and how do we make it easy for uh, people living in apartments, condos, um, downtown? So we are working with a number of apartment complexes. Uh, So you've got people like Brookside 51, 51 Main. They've, They've been fantastic. Uh, uh, providing composting for their communities and their complexes. But we are now starting, because we've had such a demand recently, of opening up what we're you know, calling dog stops, which just allows people to have a five-gallon um, Casey can at home, and they can just bring it to us and dump that as needed. So, you know, if you're living by yourself downtown, you may not need to have something picked up every week or something like that. So we're providing that as an additional um, just opportunity to help people manage their, their organics. How long have you been using carton milk? I can say I have for a while now. So I was beyond excited when I found a new and easy way to make plant-based milk with Joy. Joy is a minimally processed nut base with no added sugar and comes in 100% recyclable packaging, unlike traditional plant-based milks. My homemade biscuits have never been fluffier, and my sauces have never been creamier, thanks to adding Joy. Mix it up how you like it, on your own terms. For 10% off of your purchase of Joy, visit addjoy.com, that's A-D-D-J-O-I.com, and type in the code Lena Samford. So let's talk about that and kind of this, let's walk through the steps of if somebody wanted to get started. I know that there's like a free waste analysis that you do. Um, Are people usually surprised by the results that you find? Uh, Yes, it's very funny in Kansas City. You know, if you're looking at commercial waste audits, we don't do a waste audit for individuals or families, but, um, but for commercial waste audits, you know, most organizations do not have any idea how much they're, they're throwing in the landfill each month. So it is surprising. And then we not only take food waste, but we're also taking all their paper waste and sun cardboard and flour waste and things like that. So a lot more can go into the compost than just the the food waste. Yeah. So Nelson, I believe he said that they reduced their overall trash collection by one eight yard uh, dumpster every week. But anyway, so you can, by diverting the food waste and flour waste and paper waste, it adds up pretty quickly. Yeah. I'm sure that they see the dollar signs that are attached to that. And not only, you know, how it's affecting the environment, but like it also affects their business. 
It does. It does. Actually, part of the research you asked about early on, the, the Pew research um, showed us over and over again, just this is back in like 2000. 17, that people are supporting green businesses. Uh, they are willing to pay more to go to green businesses. And it's it's a young generation by and large, but, um, but really across the board, those were the trends. And so um, we're trying to help businesses market too, so that their clients know and their customers know, hey, we're we're doing this. So come on out and support us. So we try and partner with them in that way. Yeah. It's a little reputation boost and saying like, we, we care about this place that we're all living in. Yeah. 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 Actually that's the sticker we have for their windows is, it says we care, we compost. Oh, I love that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it is true because they're caring about people and, and the environment. It really is, um, you know, one issue. So say, you know, a business decides that they want to work with Casey Can. Um, what is that training process or is there any, um, you know, education that goes into what should be composted and what shouldn't? Or it's just as easy as throwing it in a bin and, <laughs> and giving it to y'all? Oh, I wish it was so easy. <laughs> it's, it's not that easy. Um, it actually, in one sense, it is that easy. But, but what we found, um, again, going back to the 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 beginning and the original research is that there was a lot of confusion in the industry. And so one of the big surprises for these restaurants is they had tried it years ago and they had to separate out meat products from vegetable products, from milk products. And it was a complicated process. Yeah. Now it is not so complicated. Um, when you compost with us, uh, we can take all of it in one, you know, bell swoop, but we are committed to education. So for every um, business that we bring on, we ask that that entire community go through a 15 minute, you know, tutorial um, education about first why we're doing it, why we're asking them to participate and then be how to do it. And it really is simple once you know how, but we just like everybody on the same page. And what does that look like for the individual or the family side of things? Do you help with education there? We do. Um, We host uh, at least once a week, but if we have lots of apartment complexes coming on, we'll we'll do maybe twice a week. We host a Zoom kind of 15, same 15 minute webinar Mm -hmm. uh, that people can join anytime. And it talks about how to do it, why we're doing it. And then people can ask, questions uh, about the process or how to get started. And we, um, so we host those every single week. I feel like that's a really easy way to um, help educate people. And once they know, it kind of spreads. And <laughs> so you're spreading the knowledge there. You kind of mentioned, you know, you don't have to, they don't have to separate anything now. Well, the restaurants or businesses don't. So what happens whenever you get it? What's that next step look like? Yeah. So we partner with Missouri Organic, which is probably the largest uh, composting facility here in the city. And we have a pretty decent size uh, truck that hauls it all up there. It's specifically designed for food waste. Pretty gnarly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so we take it up there and we compost with them. And they have, um, they have a number of machines up there now that are state-of-the-art so they can separate out some of it, they grind it down and it's all made into compost. And it's like organic, super rich compost that so people don't have to worry about like it not being quality. It really is quality and it's from maybe even their kitchen. That That's the beautiful thing. It, it's the cycle of it. And hopefully sometime soon we'll, we'll be able to sell the Casey can compost back to the community. That's our, our vision for it so that as you know, you take your banana peel in your kitchen and you put it into your compost, then it comes back to you in the form of compost for your garden. I'd love that. That that would be really fantastic. So is that like a model um, that you think that could be utilized in other parts of the state or even the country that, you know, it's working for Kansas City? Do you think that that was something that maybe could be expanded? 
I I think there's lots of variations for all of this. Um, I, I've been called by several people in different cities uh, saying, all right, so can we replicate this? What, how do we get started? What do we do? And I do kind of like the the job training and the, the recovery issues. It, you really do have to look at your unique situation, um, but there's so much potential. And I, I think with some creative thought and research, if people understand their communities and how to solve problems within those communities, then I I think all of this could be expanded and and really replicated. I wish that there were um, multiples of you, so that way we could kind of uh, get your brain working um, in all all parts of the state and the country. So I know you said that's kind of the long term goal um, is to kind of turn it back. Um, to the city. I think that's great. Is there any, you know, short-term dreams of expanding or improving? Oh, there's always lots of of short-term, long-term dreams. Uh, That's for sure. We have no shortage of that. You know, I think our, our vision and our dream for Kansas City is to basically have people be able to go to the park or school or their work, and that a very clean, manageable system for compost is implemented there. And that it's recognizable, um, and they say, okay, we see that orange can, we know what goes in it. And, you know, I think this young generation of, we're we're working with a number of schools, the the Hickman Mills School District has been amazing, that they're they're hoping to bring on the entire district. Holiday Montessori School has been amazing. I think working with kids who are going to be that next generation will, you know, really be able to to make that kind of dream come through if if we're consistent with our messaging, education, and um, process. I guess we'll just um, wrap this up in kind of a little bow, but. Uh, what's one thing, the overarching thought that you want to kind of convey to people about? Casey can and, you know, how either whether that be the environmental or the social side of things or maybe both. What what is the ultimate goal you want to leave people with at the end of the day? My main message heading into 2021 (laughs) is that care for the environment is caring for people. That that what we do um, has an impact on those around us. It has an impact on those that are less fortunate than some of us. And my hope, you know, in this year is that um, people that our community in particular will be able to engage with, with that concept, begin to prioritize the environment because the social justice is environmental justice. They are one and the same. They're not two separate issues. They're one issue. And both are critical, basically. And so I guess that's that's what I would um, love to just leave people with is is considering how how we respond to the environment it, and considering how we respond to to others um, is one response. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, and I, I definitely feel like after 2020, um, people kind of have, you know, woken up or at least look at became a little bit more curious about how they can um, help solve these problems. So um, I love that you were able to kind of share your message with us and let people know that there is a way to do this. And um, it's it's just as simple as grabbing a can or throwing something in a bin. It is. It's that simple. It really is. Well, thank you so much, Kristen. I really do appreciate it. OK, thank you so much. To find more information on KC Can, you can find them linked in the show notes. This week on our little segment, Something to Grow On, we're going to chat a little bit about starting your compost pile. Your challenge for this week is to look into what composting method would be best for you. Living in a city and don't have the time? First, look for options in your city or town to see if there are composting services available. If you want to dip your toes into the composting world at home, Try repurposing your eggshells or coffee grounds into your soil. You could also ask around your neighborhood and see if anyone else is composting and willing to let you drop off your scraps to them once a week. 
And that goes both ways. If you're already composting, maybe you reach out to the people in your neighborhood to see if they want to contribute. But if you're wanting to get started composting on your own, there are a few at-home options for doing so, such as worm composting, also known as vermicomposting, composting in a garbage bin or rotating tumbler. I have the tumbler and I love it. Or if you have the space, start a compost pile right on your lawn. I'll link in the show notes some ways to get started on each types of these composting methods so you can find what will work best for you. It may be a little gross at first, but I promise you will be rewarded at the end when you have a fresh, beautiful pile of compost in the end. As always, I appreciate you doing your part to help the planet and the people around you on Hometown Earth. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next week. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hometown Earth as much as I did. Let us know by rating and subscribing so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every week on Tuesday. Head to the show notes linked in the episode description for more details and let us know in the comments what you want to hear next. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Believe.com and at Believe Podcasts. And you can find more about the podcast on Instagram, at Hometown Earth, or connect with me at Lena Sanford. We all know change needs to happen, so let's get started right here at Hometown Earth.